Hey, Patriot. So today we are going to be talking about the five congruence triangle theorem. So go ahead and make sure that you have some uh, colors out, that you're ready to take our notes, and let's learn about some congruent triangles. So when we, remember, when we talk about congruence and congruent polygons, polygons are congruent if all the corresponding sides and corresponding angles of one polygon are congruent to another polygon. So looking at these two polygons, I notice that opposite angles in both of them are congruent and they're congruent to each other. These angles are congruent. These angles are congruent. We notice the two ticks are congruent to the two ticks. So all the angles on the left are congruent to all the angles on the right. Top and bottom are congruent to top and bottom. So two of the sides are congruent. And lastly, the left side is congruent to the right, the left side, and the right side is congruent to the right side. So we know the left polygon is congruent to the right polygon. To say polygons are congruent, I need all the sides and all the angles to be marked congruent. Now, triangles are special. Uh, triangles, we don't need all the sides and all the angles. We can get rid of some of the sides and some of the angles. There are five different ways that we can put these in orders to do them. So the first way that we can say two triangles are congruent is by saying side, side, side. Side, side, side says if three sides of one triangle are congruent to the three sides of another triangle, then those two triangles are congruent to each other. So if we look at this, we can see that uh, FR is congruent to TO because they each have one tick mark. They each have one tick mark, so they're congruent. Uh, we can say IR is or RI is congruent to OS. And we can say FI is congruent to TS. All three sides on the left are congruent to all three sides on the right. So you can see that we've listed three different sides being congruent. So this lets us know triangle FRI is congruent to triangle TOS because of the side, side, side postulate. So this is how we're going to state this. Triangle FRI is congruent to triangle TOS by side, side, side. How do I know it's side, side, side? All three sides on the left are congruent to all three sides on the right. That is the first way we can tell two triangles are congruent. The second way is side, angle, side. Side, angle, side says if two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent to each other. What? Exactly. So what we're going to look for, we're going to look for two sides being marked in each triangle and the angle between those two sides also needs to be marked. So if we look at this first triangle, check it out. I've got one side congruent to one side. TO is congruent to CR. There's a side. I've got an angle. Angle O is congruent to angle R. And uh, side OP is congruent to side RA. Side, angle, side. The angle is between the two sides. That, that's what we mean by included angle. So it's two sides with the angle between them. Two sides angle between them. Or I like to say two sides angle in the middle. So on the left, I know triangle TOP is congruent to triangle ARC by side angle side. Pay attention. Notice when I did TOP. I started up here at the, the end of the yellow. Yellow with nothing else down to the green angle across the blue. Down the yellow side, green angle, blue. The next triangle starts the same way. Start at C, green angle, up blue. Start at the yellow, go down the yellow to the green angle, up to A. So when we're writing our congruence statement, like we learned last time, order matters. Angle, side, angle. Angle, side, angle. The theorem itself says if two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the included side of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. <sighs> That's really hard. So what are we looking for? We're looking for two angles to be marked in each triangle. Angle, angle, and the side between those angles. Two angles, side in the middle. Two angles, side in the middle. So you can see I have angle I congruent to angle P. There's an angle. I've got my side. IH is congruent to PA. And angle H is congruent to A. Now when we make our congruent statement, triangle IHS is congruent to triangle PAT by angle side angle. 
So here's my congruent statement, and here's the theorem y. Notice they lined up. I is the yellow angle. P is the yellow angle. We went up to H, the blue angle. H, A is the blue angle. They're both second, H and A. And then S, nothing's at S, nothing's at T. And why are they congruent? Angle, side, angle. Two angles, side in the middle. We have angle, angle, side. Two angles and a side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the corresponding side of the other triangle. Then the two triangles are congruent to each other. So we've got two angles and a side, two angles and a side. And the side is the one that is next to the same angle on both of them. So what we're looking for is we are looking for two angles as well as the side next to the same angle on both. What I mean by that, we've got I is congruent to P. There's a yellow angle. H is congruent to A. There's a second angle. Now, my sides both touch the yellow angle. They have to touch the same colored angle. They both touch yellow. So, uh, IS is congruent to PT. And we can notice angle, angle, side, or uh, AAS. Or you can say SAA. That works as well. So triangle IHS, yellow, green, blank, is congruent to PAT, yellow, green, blank, by angle, angle, side. Some people say side, angle, angle. Uh, I'll occasionally say side, angle, angle, and it's okay. Our last triangle theorem is called hypotenuse leg. Uh, if a hypotenuse and a leg of one right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and a leg of another right triangle, then the triangles themselves are congruent. So what are we looking for? First off, you need to make sure you have right triangles. If you do not have right triangles, hypotenuse leg does not work. So what then, if it's a right triangle, you're going to see is the hypotenuse of one congruent to the hypotenuse of another and is the leg of one congruent to the leg of another. Hypotenuse is always the side opposite the right angle. So when we're looking at these, there's my right angle. So we know we have tri right triangles because without right triangles, you can't use hypotenuse leg. Uh, I know DG is congruent to TA. These are, this is the hypotenuse. And C, uh, oh, I'm sorry, OG is congruent to CT. Or uh, that's the leg. So triangle ODG, OD, ODG is congruent to ACT. Oops, this is actually wrong. ODG. Does anybody notice why this is wrong? Should, it shouldn't be, o, if it's ODG, it needs to line up. So ODG, that needs to start at CAT. So this needs to be CAT. Those of you who caught it, awesome job. If you didn't catch it, what's the matter with you? Pay attention. So if you got any questions, so those are the five congruence triangle theorems. So if you've got any questions, please write them down on the little note space I provided. Uh, come in. With those questions ready to answer i'm sorry this video was a little longer but we had to get it all in place and i think we did uh, so be ready for bell work be ready to go and patriots we'll see you when we see you